As you know, my preferred radio for the for playing Airsoft is the Baofeng UV82. Main advantage of this radio is it includes a, there's two buttons here for the push to talk. What this will let you do is you can select, you know, channel A or channel B for whatever that game includes. So for your, if you're, depending on how the leadership is worked out or however the game's gonna operate, you can put your, let's say, for example, at one of the games, I was a platoon leader, so I needed, I had one channel where it was just me and all the squad leaders, and then the bottom channel was just me and my friends. So I could check in, what are you guys up to? How's that objective going? I could flip back and check in with the other guys. There's some different push to talk options for either connecting two radios on your person or what have you. This will do I think everything you could ask for from having two radios. This, this gives you the same benefit in one. The problem, since this is a pretty unique design, the actual headsets you have to choose from are garbage. There's a chest mounted you know, type where it has the speaker built into it. It's not good for being quiet or covert. Um, you also have one of these options. This is what comes with it. Okay, so you have your you have your two buttons of microphones built there. The microphone works fine, but you have this hard plastic earpiece. I hate this. It does, it's not comfortable. I don't know why they even make these. Uh, so what I do is I custom make my own. So for this one, I went ahead and cut it off. I actually had a problem with the other one that I bought. It, you know, six dollars, and it stopped working after a certain amount of time. So I'm using that as an opportunity to show you what I normally do. You can find these uh, com Baofeng compatible push to talks on Amazon for about six or seven dollars. It's just got a very simple button. You press here, microphone's there, you can clip it on your person. But what I really like are these in-ear pieces. I run one of these at my job 40 hours a week. I've gotten used to it and they're pretty comfortable. Main thing you want to do when you put this around your ear, trim up this piece. Normally they always give you far too much and you'll notice as this goes over your ear it'll tend to flop over unless you shape that to fit. Once you cut that, I have found the default uh, rubber caps to be perfect for me. What I'll do is I'll actually take this, cut it somewhere in the middle, which I've already done with this one, give you kind of that Martha Stewart experience. And you, inside of these are very frail wires. Uh, it's not ideal for what we're doing, but I'm just going to give you an idea of how I do this and then how I'm going to go about reinforcing it. So main starting place to go, I personally will just kind of take an X-Acto knife and just go around here and then I'll pull off the extra using my fingernails. So once you get that exposed, you're going to notice that there's very awesome, I'm not recording, seems good. Once you have it cut, you're going to notice that there's these two very faint wires. Separating those is very difficult. And in this situation, I think I've actually damaged the wire, so I'm going to try it again. Let's go ahead and get a sharper blade. What I like to do whenever I finish one, I take some masking tape, just tape up those dangerous corners. That way you can help protect anyone else from having an injury. It seems backwards, but the sharper the knife, in a lot of ways, the safer, safer it'll be. Meanwhile, I got my soldering iron warming up here. We're gonna have that ready to go. And you can see it's cutting a lot easier. So yeah, so the main goal is get this housing of, of, around the wire off. 
and then you can see what's really going on in there. It's going to be two wires. One of them is the ground, and the other one is the primary. And I'm sure someone on uh, YouTube can correct me on what's going on. Let me get these into frame. But you'll notice there's the two wires. So what I like to do is take my knife, just kind of separate those left and right. There's some kind of protective coating around the red wire. That's not focusing. Let's see if we can bring it in. There you go. There's some kind of coating around this red wire that makes it difficult for the solder to connect to it. Uh, also, I've noticed that I've heated up the wire enough that it breaks off. So give yourself some flexibility. Don't be too impatient. You know, you want to give yourself time to make a mistake and correct it. Also, I don't recommend doing any wiring without some kind of little buddy apparatus. I give you my rundown on how I personally solder wires. On these, uh, I've noticed that they pretty much look the same, so you just match like with like. So, on the left, we've got the wire that doesn't have any solder on it. You will... Let's see where it is. Here we go, so you always do the tip. Insert joke. Uh, and then what I do is I just kind of go where that wire, where the wire is. And I just want to get that coated with solder. Same thing below. Wipe the excess off. Now I'm left-handed. This should be on the left-hand side, but you know, whatever reasons. So let's see here if we can focus. You can get an idea of what I've done here. It's a little bit sloppy, but I got the solder on both sides. Make sure they don't cross together, otherwise you're, they're going to short. I, 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 it's happened to me. It hasn't caused anything to specifically not work, but it's a good idea to avoid that. What I notice on the radio is it just doesn't work the way I was wanting it to. Or the channel will be muted. I like to get these to overlap before we go at it. Those aren't connecting. Part of the struggle here is getting them close enough that they'll stick to one another. And then comes the testing part. So you'll notice, got the solder in there. So normal experience for the Baofeng. Beep beep, tells you channel mode. I keep it off. Then I'll plug this into my ear and I'll listen to see if I did it right. At least for the sound. I gotta find out if the sound works. So get that into my ear. Audio is transmitting properly. And then you gotta check the buttons. So we got the up channel, we got the down channel. So that's all it takes. Up, down, up, down. And then you can see also there it's going to work the same way. So something went wrong. The last model I had, I, the either the up or the down button wasn't responding. So now what you got here is a very easily to be damaged or ripped apart joint. Uh, some people just use heat shrink and call it a day. I don't know. You know this is airsoft. If if it's going to break, it's going to break. My preferred technique is to actually 
protect the area with toothpicks and uh, hot glue. So let's get that out. So one of the things I like about hot glue, it's going to give me a waterproof seal. Not that the rest of this is waterproof, by, by no means is that correct, but it's going to seal. So I don't have to worry about moisture or something else getting in there. It's going to be durable. And I'm going to use Q-tips. I'm sorry, I'm going to use toothpicks to help reinforce that connection to make it more sturdy. And the goal of this is to just, in case there is a bend or something that happens along the wire, reinforce where it's weak. I'm sure you could use any type of metal or plastic or anything else for this. It's my go-to. Glue should be just about ready to go. I'm using just a regular glue stick or hot glue stick. I'm not using any specific type. Uh, I haven't had any problems with this melting or getting silly in North Carolina summers. This also can help smooth the surface out. Prevent it from getting snagged. There's going to be plenty of strings. It's part of the fun of working with hot glue. But I'm going to clean all that up later. Nice thing about this, in case I fail or make a mistake, I've got some extra material to cut with. I also have, you know, you can always buy more of these as needed. I think this headset cost me $7 a piece, so 14 bucks. And, you know, I see guys running the Repro, different push-to-talk and headsets. They, they consistently have problems. I can tell you if I have two years' experience using the Baofengs with these cheap headsets. Haven't had a single problem. Every now and then someone might tell you that, you know, the headset isn't close enough to your mouth or something like that. But other than that, I haven't had any real problems or frustrations. And for me, it's been a very budget effective solution. So you can see here, the, the wires are still exposed. Not a problem. I'm going to hit it with that first little bit of glue. Make sure that I cover everything up. And then part of the project is just warming up that area where the toothpick's going to go. Also, if you get hot glue on your skin, just try to pinch it and spread it out as quickly as you can. That'll, uh, that'll prevent it from burning for longer than it has to. And so then I kind of just sculpt with the glue. I'm pulling my fingers away. It's just because I'm doing. I'm using hot glue in a way it wasn't meant to. And if you want, you know, just for appearances, you could wrap this up in electrical tape afterwards, just to main, maintain that it's black. Or if you have kind of large heat shrink, now would be a perfectly adequate time to use that.
And then I'm just smoothing out the areas from the wire to the toothpick. Pretty excessive. And, you know, I can tell you from personal experience, if you need to undo this, just cut it all off. Um, I have enough extra wire. I could probably do it one more time. It's just a very cost-effective way to make sure you have the push-to-talk that you're more, most comfortable with. I probably wouldn't try to make this type of modification to a really expensive headset. Did I not use the longer piece? And so now when pressure is applied to the joint, it's going to impact here and here versus that weak spot. Um, and in case something ever goes wrong with the wiring, I can only snip and keep going. And so then the big final test, did I make it or ruin it? Once your glue cools, you give it another test. All right, that's good. And now all our buttons. Cool. Done. That's all there is to it. And that's how you take your preferred earpiece and connect it to the Baofeng UV82 push the tuck with two buttons. Thanks for watching.